Les, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Spainhower Field in beautiful Kirksville, Missouri, for week number eight of the high school football season. The Trenton Bulldogs attempting to go to 6-2, and two, which would be uh, Trenton's, I think, first six-win regular season since at least 2008. Might be looking back as well to that uh, outstanding 2007 team that went all the way to the state uh, quarterfinals for bowing out in a uh, tough-fought game down in Jeff City against Blair Oaks High School. Tom Johnson with you. We have Jacob Marley uh, standing by. We are on video on YouTube. Go to YouTube.com. Search for KTTN Radio. It's not one word. It's two. So put a space in between KTTN and radio. And uh, you can uh, pick up video that is as about as live as you're going to get on the World Wide Web. I was looking at it uh, just about 20 minutes ago. Kind of timing it out with the clock here. We are about 25 seconds behind absolutely live. So if you're listening to the radio and you are watching the video, you'll be about 25 seconds off. But other than that, we are good to go here from Kirksville. It appears to be a winnable game for Trenton tonight. The Kirksville Tigers have had struggles in their non-conference and North Central Missouri Conference schedule this year. The Tigers are 0-7, but Jacob, it's a game that Trenton cannot afford by any stretch in the imagination to take lightly. Kirksville's been more than competitive with about three or four of their opponents, and pretty good opponents at that. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a class ahead of Trenton in, in terms of just actual class size, and you know they've got a, they've got a bigger football team, and that means with more numbers, they're going to have more talent and uh, more c competition for those starting spots. So this is going to be a tough opponent for Trenton, absolutely. But like you said, we can't afford to lose this one in terms of uh, the playoff scale. Trenton is five and LeBlanc four, and there's about two points difference right now. And Trenton trying to get in position for that number four spot. If things go well for the Bulldogs tonight, Jake, we could be we could be sitting in that number four spot by the end of the night. Both LeBlanc and Trenton are playing class four teams tonight. LeBlanc is playing in city rival Lafayette up at uh, Alumni Stadium in St. Joseph. Trenton playing at class four Kirksville. So it's even there. If Trenton wins and LeBlanc loses, it's going to be really good news for the Bulldogs going into the Concordia game. Yeah, it really is, and it, it gets us even closer to that chance that you speak about getting a home playoff game, which would be absolutely huge for this football team and for this town. That would be two weeks from tonight's, and there will be a playoff game that night. Whether or not it's going to be CF Russell Stadium or on the road, that waits to be seen. Trenton is at Kirksville tonight. Concordia will come to CFR for a senior night next week, but maybe not the final game of the seniors' home schedule. They only had four home games this year and five on the road. They like to even that up at the very least at five and five. There's no guarantees either that that would be the only home game in a potential district run for the Trenton Bulldogs. Just kind of waits to be seen. That's going to be a wide open district. Colton Neff ready to boot the football away on KGOZ. Gallatin Chilicati, the Trent senior, booms it from right to left on your radio dial. Drives it back to the 10-yard line, grabbing it there and bringing it the other way. Escaping to the 25-yard line and out to the 30 is the Kirksville kick returner. And that is Joe Sollers, the 153-pound junior, bringing it back out to the 30. So first down and at 10 for the Kirksville Tigers. Kirksville, if you're not watching at home and listening, we'll kind of fill in the blanks for you. Black tops and gray pants, white helmets, orange numerals with white, uh, with gray trim. Trenton is in the uh, road whites with the black pants, black numerals, black helmet with the gold tee. Trenton shows a five-man front. And here's Bohan back to pass. He's under pressure. He's going to be sacked at the 20 and fumbled the football, but it was down by contact. So Bohan tried the boot out to the right side, and we are not finding a lot of teams that are able to block both Colton Neff and Cree Mullenix from the corners. That time it was Neff coming in for a sack of 10 yards. Yeah, and it's because the problem is when it comes to a passing uh, a passing play on a run team, on the outside you're going to have one-on-one -on -one blocks, and Mullenix and, and uh, Neff aren't going to have any problem with that. High formation by behind Bohan. He will hand it off, and it is a slowly de developing draw play and stop just outside the uh, far hash mark is the running back for... Uh, Kirksville in Marshall Cook, and that's going to bring up third down and 22 yards to go for Kirksville High School. The ball is just outside the 20. Kirksville needs to go to the 41-yard line to pick up first down yardage. 10.58 to go here at Spainhower Field on the uh, southeast side of Kirksville on this huge Kirksville school complex. No score between the Bulldogs and the Kirksville Tigers. 
From the gun will be the sophomore quarterback, 6'3", 186 pound, John Bohan. He takes a snap, looks down the field, catch made at the 30 and a solid tackle at the 31 yard line. Nowhere near first down yardage. And Kirk- Kirksville does pick up about 11 on that pass reception by Joey Thomas, 176 pound senior. But that's, uh, that's what you want if you're Trenton. You, you give up 10, they need to get 22. Solid tackle by Travis Leeper. Yeah, Travis Leeper, I think, is the most underrated player on this defense, except for maybe Kale McCarter, because he plays a lot in the passing game, which teams don't pass a lot, and then he's also a really great tackler. Here's a kick by Schilling. Booms it toward Leeper. It's going to be kicked away from Travis and take a huge Kirksville bounce. It hits at the 35-yard line. It's going to roll close to the 20, and it's going to be picked up there at the 21-yard line. We were watching my app on my phone at about 0615 tonight, so we can report for those of you that are living under a rock and have not found out yet. Royals won today. I'm not a Royals fan per se, but I, I'm a Royals bandwagon fan in October. I think uh, you know, it made no bones about that fact. 5-4 the win, and that was a big win for the boys in Blue Jake. Yeah, it really was. Uh, I, I don't really follow baseball too much, but I know I love the area around here whenever the Royals make it far in the playoffs, so I, I'm rooting for them. Did not want to go down 2-0 going to Houston at a best of five. That would have been troublesome. Bulldogs have the football first and 10 from the 21-yard line. Here's a handoff to Neff. He will test the middle. He's out across the 25 and bang down at the 29-yard line. How many times have we seen Colton Neff get spun this season, Jake? A lot of guys get spun, and they're worried about getting hit in the hamstrings and the backside and the lower back. And Colton Neff is just comfortable uh, backing up than he is going forward. Well, I'll tell you what, that Princeton game, uh, it was the only game I've seen so far this season where Neff has had any run at all where he hasn't been completely covered by tacklers and still been able to pick up positive yardage. Kale McCarter leads the Bulldogs to the line of scrimmage, second down in a, a short two. Again, the uh, keeper by uh, McCarter, he faked it nicely to Neff, then Kale brought it right through the middle for that gain of seven yards and a first down. I've been watching more and more of our video, just kind of scouting us and grading us out, kind of those things after the fact. And the more I look at it, boy, Kale McCarter is a magician with that ball. He really gets that deep into the gut of Colton F, and so often he will uh, take it out there at the uh, at the last possible second. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the main, the important thing about this training offense when it comes to the quarterback is just being able to run the option well, crisp, easy, handoff fakes. You know, and Kel McCarter does a really great job at that. Double wing. Here comes Lamp. He makes a cut at the 30-yard line to the 35 and drag down short to the 38. One of the first things, in fact, is the first thing when uh, Jacob came up here to the it says, beautiful press box here at Spain Hour Field, which... If it's not the best in Northeast Missouri, I want to see what's better. We'll just uh, put it there. It's a pretty nice place to be. And the first thing uh, Jacob said is, I want to see uh, how fast Jonathan Lamp and Travis Leeper are on this turf. It's field turf, and they should be able to scoot on this. Yeah, especially Lamp, who uses you know all of his speed to get around that corner. I want to see if he can do that with a little bit more success tonight, because those are always fun plays to watch. As a gain of two on uh, Jonathan Lamp's uh, legs, it's second down and eight. Motion man is Leeper. Hand off Neff, and he gets tripped up at the 40. Might have stumbled forward to the 41-yard line. Short gain of three, and here's where Trenton gets its first test of the night. It's going to be third down and just about five yards to go from the Bulldog 41-yard line. Yeah, these have been the iffy spots for Trenton so far, uh, their offense, because third and short, we've been able to see they hand the ball to Neff. They can usually pick it up. Third and, you know, nine or ten, we sometimes see that slant to Mullinex, and they can pick up the first down yardage. Third and five or six, it's always been an uh, iffy spot for this offense. Yeah, the maybe 50% run, 50% pass. We'll see what the Coach Boz has. Leaper motion man gets the handoff, cuts to the middle. He stays on his feet, and he's going to be tackled about a yard short of the first down. He got hit at the 43. Travis did a nice job of staying on his feet. Kind of uh, brushed off that tackle of Marshall Cook, but he's going to be a yard short, and here's where we're going to find out a little bit uh, about the early guts here, Coach Boswell. Yeah, this early in the game, it's definitely a gutsy call. I, I, I'm not sure whether Boswell goes for this or not, considering we're still not even across the 50. I got a hunch he does. That's a hunch on my part. I, I think he has so much confidence in this line, and, and particularly number 33 right now, that he feels like they can gain a yard. Mm, especially after last game where the offensive line played so well. And maybe more so he has confidence in the defense if things don't go well. Here's a quarterback sneak. McCarter gets the first down. 
He is all the way to midfield. That'll be a quarterback sneak of five yards by Cale McCarter. Quite frankly, we, we had a lot of worry about that. I was kind of a, a little bit uh, double-guessing coach or uh, of those things. That was pretty easy on that quarterback sneak. Uh, great block up front by Tucker Franklin. Yeah, the quarterback sneak is always like a mysterious play because, you know, you always try and just get the one yard for the first down, but then if no one's tackling you, you can just keep uh, trudging forward. McCarter hands off Neff. Good yardage off left end, stays on his feet, and he stumbles across the 45-yard line to the 42-yard line. We know that Colton Neff has been a great football player, Jacob, but when he goes, as he did last week, he goes over 2,000 yards as a Bulldog and is one of only six that we know of that's been over 2,000, and it's a great list. What a great football player Colton has been in his four years as a Trenton Bulldog. Yeah, it really it not only shows you how good of a football player he is now, but it shows you how good of a football player he's been his whole time at Trenton. Second and three, Lee Promotion Man gets a handoff. He cuts back middle. He's to the 40-yard line. First down for Travis. He is ahead to the close to the 36-yard line. They're going to mark him just inside the 37. That's a gain of five yards in a Trenton Bulldog first down. Yeah, they, we've seen that that little sweet play to Leeper more and more where Leeper, Leeper goes in between the tackles. And, you know, whenever the lineman can get past the first level up into the second level, it works out really well because then Travis has room to use his explosiveness and his uh, elusiveness to break tackles. Lamp in. He will be the uh, right side wing back here, replacing uh, Berkey Bile. Under center is McCarter. Lamp will be the motion man. Hand off Neff. And uh, Neff across the 35-yard line. Gets drilled at the 33. Well, this is a good drive to watch if you're a Trenton Bulldog fan. It is not fancy. It is meat and potatoes, but it is Trenton just grinding out yards and really wearing down Kirksville midway through this first quarter from Spain Hour. Yeah, it's a great drive for uh, for you to watch if you're a fan of Trenton. If you're a Kirksville fan, you know, this drive... <coughs> excuse me. This drive is probably bothering you. It's just every single play, they seem to get some sort of positive yardage. Second down and six for the Bulldogs from the 33-yard line. McCarter sends Leeper in motion, hands it off, back to the middle, he's to the 30-yard line, stays on his feet, and he jumps forward, I think for the first down, they're going to give him a pretty nice spot to the 26-yard line, give Travis a gain of seven, and another tr uh, Trenton Bulldog first down. So Trenton definitely, and it's something you mentioned here, Jake, is that Travis Leeper in particular is testing out the middle. Are they working in between the hash marks or do Leeper and Neff with the thought process here of eventually we're going to hit him with Lamp on, on the sweep play? I think the thought process is just over the past couple weeks that play's been working, so let's keep going to it. And off Neff. He's across the 25, and he gets to the 23-yard line. Big gang of uh, Kirksville Tigers were in the black, the white, and the orange. Yank him back there after a gain of four. Now we'll give it three on that one. That's going to be generous and give it four, but it looks like uh, to the naked eyes, we kind of uh, look at it across the way. Three-yard gain, maybe three and a half. Down to the 23-yard line will be second down in seven. Four and a half left to go. No score in the first quarter from Kirksville, but Trenton dominating on this drive. Leaper in motion. Hand off Neff. He's to the 20-yard line. Not fancy, but it's effective. Gain of four and another big th uh, third down coming up here for the Bulldogs. you got to figure at this point, too, uh, it's four down territory right now for Trenton. Yeah, this, this deep into the opponent's territory, it's, it's four down simply because of the field position that you put your opponent at the disadvantage of having. Also, if Trenton were to try a field goal from here, I don't know how comfortable Coach would be with uh, sending Colton Neff out there for a 37-yarder. Yeah, Neff usually needs to get warm a little bit more with the PATs before he attempts the longer ones. Motion man here will be, uh, um, not McCarter, rather a lamp as McCarter is going to get spun down after a gain of one, maybe two. He's inside the 20, and he's down to the 19-yard line. This has been a great drive for Trenton. There has not been a big play, and it would be demoralizing for Trenton if it doesn't r result in points. And Trenton is now facing a fourth down, and... Just about three yards to go from the 19-yard line. Only a gain of one, and the quarterback keeper by Kale McCarter. Yeah, it wouldn't be a good thing, but I think this team and Coach Boswell has enough confidence in the defense that it wouldn't necessarily be a huge blow to this team to not pick up the first down. Leaper in motion, gets the handoff, cuts back, middle puts his head down. He gets the first down across the 15 and down to the 14-yard line. Doesn't it look like that Trenton just kind of knows that if they need to get five yards, they can get five yards on any running play tonight? 
Yeah, it really looks like that. Uh, I mean, they're they're closing in on Neff a little bit in the middle, but that's to be expected because Neff is that power runner, and that's the play that we go to a lot. But when it comes to Travis Leeper going between the tackles or Jonathan Lamb going outside, they don't have a lot of great answers for it. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. Hand off to Leeper. He's to the 5-yard line. Oh, uh, Leeper, uh, Neff didn't have that football. That was McCarter keeping the football, and he paid for that decision. As Alex Grimm, big 252-pound sophomore, came in and he uh, dropped Kale. Kale did get a yard on forward momentum. It looked like Neff was going to score on that, but I think Kirksville kind of realized too. Hey, 33 doesn't have the football. Yeah, but you know that 33 was the first first place that they looked on that play was for who did have the football. Yeah, it, it took him about two, three yards. You got to look in there and make sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's that's the point of the option play. That's why we run it so much. Second and nine, Bulldogs from the 13-yard line. Motion man is Leaper, and here is the uh, handoff to to Neff. He's to the 10. Looked like McCarter tried to give Colton a little shove in the back there at the end of that play. As making the stop for Kirksville is Justin Simler, 272-pound D lineman. There's some big boys up on that line for Kirksville that Trenton's been able to get low on and get a good push. But now the Bulldogs are facing a critical third down and seven from the Kirksville Tiger 10-yard line. No score from Spain Hour Field in Kirksville, Missouri between the Trenton Bulldogs and the Kirksville Tigers as we go under 100 seconds in a swiftly moving first quarter. Mullenix flashes out to the uh, far sideline. Berkey Bile in the slot, and here's the pitch coming out wide to Leaper. He cuts at the 10-yard line, stays on his feet, goes inside to the 6, and uh, Trenton's going to have a decision here. I called it the 6. We will see where forward momentum got Travis. It's going to be at least 4th down at about 4. Field goal here, or do you think Coach Boswell goes for it? Um, you know what? I, th- I think Coach Boswell is going to kick a field goal here because I think that uh, this one's just a little bit too long to test it and give up the ball whenever you've got points in front of you. We have seen, this is a part of the equation too, Trenton does not have the greatest kicking game out there, but it's been pretty good over the last two weeks. In his last, I believe it's 10, it might be 12, it, it's either 9 of 10 or 11 of 12 uh, extra points for Colton F. So Colton's been good. This would be a little bit longer than an extra point, and I think what also might play into the thought process here of Coach Boswell is there would be a little bit of an angle there for Neff, so it's, it's not a straightaway kick. Yeah, he had one game, I think it was week two or three, where he really struggled and missed uh, missed more than he made on the on the PATs, and uh, I'm sure that they worked on that a lot after after that game in practice, and it's really shown as he's been able to be much more consistent as a kicker, especially whenever he's he's gotten a few in and gotten his rhythm going. It, we, it's been an odd drive because Trenton has, I think, if I remember right, no, well, it, it, Trenton did kick the football off to Kirksville, so memory's coming back. Happened slowly at my age, but it's been... It was a three and out for Kirksville, which probably took about two minutes. So Trenton's had the ball literally here for about ten minutes of play. Mm-hmm. That, that's how the offense runs. You know, it's the ground and pound offense, two or three yards per carry. And one of the best things about that offense that Trenton likes to do is that it runs time off the clock. And as we're seeing in this game, it can really, really run time off the clock whenever you get it going just the way you want it. Things get tight in here. I got the feeling Coach Boswell is going, going to go for it. The ball is not on the right hash, but it is close to that right hash. It lays at the 8-yard line. It would be a 25-yard field goal for Colton Neff. Well, I think he changed his mind because I saw he sent McCarter out there with gloves a second ago, and they were setting up for a PAT or a field goal, excuse me. So I think he changed his mind. Okay, yeah, Neff's out there, but he's out there as the fullback. So Trenton's going to go for it on fourth down and five as the Kirksville Band and fans get behind their team. Motion man is going to be Berkey Bile. Handoff goes to Leeper. He tries to cut to the five and he's going to be chopped down at the five. I thought there might be a little bit of misdirection shown by, there by the Bulldogs or a different look to Kirksville. It was a uh, an effective play of three yards but the bad part about it is fourth down and five so Trenton's going to give up the football after a drive that went 75 yards and took 10 minutes but no points. The, the good news for Trenton is, is that they've uh, they flopped the field down to the five-yard line. We'll see if the Bulldog defense can get after Kirksville as Kirksville is going to have a very long field. 
Yeah, I understand the call there with the, with them being backed up so far and with the defense as good as it is. But I still think you take the points there. That's really close. I think Neff can hit that if he's got if he's got his rhythm right. And you know that that's three points right there. Bohan will uh, line up in the shotgun from his own end zone. Takes a snap. Sophomore looks into the flat. Catch will be made at the 10 yard line. Closing and making a hit there at the 15 on the pass receiver Joey Thomas is Travis Leeper. A flag went down at the 12-yard line. My hunch is there might have been an illegal block there against Kirksville. Yeah, I, I think it was some, yeah, block in the back by number eight, Joe Sollers, the wide receiver on uh, Travis Leeper there before he was able to make the tackle. One of two things. It's either it's either you know a strike to the head or something like that against Travis, and it looked like a clean hit by Leeper. I didn't think there was a problem with that, so I'm looking at it going, unless Leeper you know, hit him in the face mask or something like that, and it's a 15-yard penalty. That has to be a block in the back. Yeah, based on the timing that he threw the flag, I initially thought that it was the tackle by Leeper as well, and I was kind of thinking, you know, ah, oh, come on, that was a completely clean hit, and then I thought, you know, Leeper had trouble getting off that block. I think it must have been an illegal block. Bad news for Kirksville penalty. A good news for Kirksville is that do it over again, first and 10, spot foul. Here's Bohan. He's sacked in the end zone. He got rid of the football. Is it going to be a safety or is it not? He was on his way down. He had been nailed by Mason Owen. Owen was right on Bohan. Bohan was in the process of going down. I think they're going to call intentional grounding they on that better. one. They had better call intentional or, grounding. Yeah, if they don't, the Bulldog absolutely. coaching staff are going to be not happy. There's a flag down, and it should be intentional grounding. That was absolutely intentional grounding. He, th he didn't get that ball. I don't know if he got it back to the line of scrimmage. No, it hit right about the five. Yeah, I watched the ball. It hit right about at the, at oh. the two or three yard line. They just waved off the flag. Oh, what an awful call. That's that a is terrible not. Call. That is a bad, bad, bad call. That was. Let's give some credit to Mason Owen. He blew up the offensive lineman. He should have got a safety on that. Yeah, he really should have. I, I, I'm really surprised at that call. Quarterback was definitely in the pocket as he was going down through it. Looked like it hit about the two or three to me. Definitely intentional grounding. Well, that's a break for Kirksville. Kirksville is still in the hole here. Second down and ten from the five-yard line. Bohan now under center. The snap clock is down to 17. The score clock is not running. It's at 34 and a half in the first quarter. And we get a flinch on Kirksville, and the Tigers will be moving backwards. We saw this from Princeton a couple of weeks ago when you're struggling so often it's offense. You know, Kirksville did get a couple of uh, scores late, but uh, Princeton was dominated in the first half by this Trenton defense, and Kirksville looks like they're having just the same difficulties getting everybody on the same page here in the first quarter. Yeah, with this Trenton defense, it seems week to week for the opposing team, when it rains, it pours. You know, whenever you start struggling, the, just the holes are going to open up, and it's going to be a tough battle uphill for you. 34 and a half seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Bohan from his own end zone. Here comes the Rashi fakes, and he rolls out. Pass caught at the 10-yard line, breaking the tackle out to the 15, and scampering out to the 25-yard line, breaking two tackles in the process. For Kirksville High School is the pass receiver, Joe Sollers. Looked like Trenton gambled on that near sideline, trying to get a pick six. Didn't get the pick six and then missed a couple of tackles. Yeah, that was Jonathan Lamp there. I, I don't think he was necessarily going for the interception, but more just diving to try and knock the ball away. And as you said, that's a really risky play because as you, as you saw there, as he missed the ball, uh, he fell to the ground and wasn't able to get up and get the tackle before the runner got the first down. 17 seconds left to go in the first quarter for Kirksville. Bohan from the gun. He takes a snap. It's a run straight through the middle. He breaks a tackle of Naff and Shield polishes him off after a gain of one out to the 27-yard line. That will be the final play of the first quarter of play from Spain Hour Field in Kirksville. A first quarter dominated by a long Trenton drive that ended up fruitless. After one, it's Kirksville nothing and Trenton no, no score. We're back to Kirksville High School in a minute on Hot Country Z 101.7 and YouTube.com.
Welcome back here to Spain Hour Field as we return to action and it's a pick and it might be a pick six for the Bulldogs. Pick at the 35 and dancing into the end zone up the far sideline for the Trenton Bulldog touchdown. Help me out with the number. I can't see it from here, Jake. That was John, I thought it was Jonathan Lamp. He steps in front of the wide receiver. He picks it off. It looked like Jonathan Lamp's speed going down the sideline. It's a pick six of 30 yards and a great way to start the second quarter for the Bulldogs. Getting six from the defense. Well, I'll tell you what. You run the same wide receiver route for three or four plays in a row. Even high school quarterbacks are going to figure it out eventually. They ran that same curl route on the outside that they, they had run the past two plays and gotten first downs off of. And Lamp was able to figure it out that time and get the interception take to the house. Hey, we've seen the defense do great things. We've not seen a lot of pick sixes and uh, touchdowns for the defense. That's that's tremendous for this group, deserving of the pick six. On to attempt the extra point is Neff. It's low end over end and no good. Didn't make good contact on that and hit a lo low tracer line drive right off of the turf. Nine seconds into the second quarter, it's six to nothing, THS. We're back in half a minute on C101.7. So I'm hearing that the lamp interception on the first play of the second quarter cut our videographer Logan Demsich by surprise. He's pulling a Mia Culp up here. Said he didn't get it on video, so he apologizes. But there was a pick six. Any part of it? Yes, no. Okay, he, he got he got Jonathan like crossing the goal line. So he, he got the most important part, the six points going up on the board. Mason Owen to kick the football away for the uh, Trenton Bulldogs. Sollers back deep to return short. End over end kick hits at the 36-yard line. And catching it there and taking it E are the Kirksville Tigers doing the job there. Levi Moore, 170-pound senior wide receiver. It's hard to say that this defense could be playing with any more confidence than they are coming off of a shutout, but the only thing they hadn't really done is a pick six. Yeah, yeah, it, this is their first pick six of the season, isn't it? I believe so. I was going to say after the first quarter of the game kind of reminded me of Holden, which was not really a good comparison because the second and third quarters against Holden weren't pretty. So the second quarter here starts with a bang for the Bulldogs who line up with a five-man front. Under center is Bohan, and he hands it off. Coming right side out to the 40 into the 42 yard line is the running back for Kirksville, Amos Gebhardt, 192 pound senior. Kirksville showing Trent a lot of looks. We'll, we'll see uh, Bohan in the shotgun. That's the time we saw the traditional I formation. So uh, they're trying to at least give this talented Bulldog defense some different things to look at. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, is that not their first maybe second run play the whole game they've been, they've been throwing it most of the time second or third they yeah had it. yeah they haven't had it for very long well here they go back to the gun and it's an empty gun now they're going to send a man in motion will kirksville will be the little shuffle pass off to blake lewis he races near sideline and then he's knocked down at the near hash at the 40. so that's going to lose a yard or two one of the things that Trenton has had is a good track program in the spring. It's one of the things that kind of been Coach Croy's baby here for the last a handful of years. And we have seen this team have speed. And it's, it's hard to beat this defense sideline to sideline. Yeah, yeah, it really is on both sides of the football. Offensively, it's really hard to track these guys down to the sideline with Lamp and Lever being so fast. Defensively, you have those same guys on defense along with these linebackers who have some great pursuit skills for high school linebackers. I, I formation, a hand out Gebhardt. He tries to break through a hole, briefly does, and then he got stood up by Mr. Cotton. Connor Cotton filled that hole the way a middle linebacker would want to, and he got help from uh, Isaiah Kuhn along with Trey Shields. That was a big time uh, step into the hole there by Connor Cotton. That, th there was three guys on the tackle, but it was number 44 who was limping around a little bit, but made a big time hit. Yeah, it really was. Whenever Connor Cotton made the first contact in there, it was one-on-one -on -one running back versus linebacker, and Connor Cotton showed who the dominant player there was. Schilling to boot the football away, low end over end snap. He grabs it. 
low kick toward Leeper, and Leeper's going to get out of the way. Now the ball takes a Trenton hop, and hops back to the 24-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for the Trenton Bulldogs with 9.46 to go in the second quarter. What are the things you feel like that Coach Boswell learned uh, for, uh, about his uh, football team on that just about 80-yard drive that took it all the way down to the five-yard line? What are the things that he kind of learned from that drive that you feel like you might use on drive number two? Well, I feel like one of the things he learned is that uh, the Kirksville linebackers, you know, aren't doing an excellent job. Their defensive line is doing really well at getting penetration, but whenever the running backs can get to the second level, you know, they, they haven't had a lot of trouble with the linebackers, so that's one key thing. Trenton moving from left to right on your radio dial in the second quarter. The handoff goes to Neff. He uh, doesn't have the football. McCarter has it. He breaks out across the 30, and he slides out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Excellent play, uh, fake by McCarter. It's a gain of eight, and it'll be a uh, Trenton Bulldog not first down, but exactly where Trenton wants to be, second down and short. Oh, that was a first down. I beg your pardon. Out to the 33-yard line. They're going to give uh, McCarter the spot, and a first down carry. 9.37 to go in the second quarter. Six to nothing Bulldogs on a second quarter. Pick six of 30 yards by senior cornerback Jonathan Lamp. Motion man is the aforementioned Lamp. Here is the handoff to... Uh, Colton Neff, he almost went into the hole and came out the other end. He's going to get knocked down at about the 39-yard line, but I think what I saw there is probably the same thing you saw, Jake, where Neff had a good head of steam, and he was maybe a step, step and a half from being able to break into the secondary and, and find a safety instead of a linebacker. Yeah, really, if, if we can get the defensive line blocked here, we're going to get big runs because these linebackers are not able to handle Colton Neff and they're barely able to handle, handle Travis Leeper. So really it's the defensive line that's the problem area here. Second and four, handoff Neff across the 40 and he grinds out to the 45-yard line. So here's what I saw on that. Colton Neff gets hit at the 42-yard line and he literally took about half of this big city of Kirksville on his shoulders and he dragged him for three yards out to the 45-yard line, first down, black and gold. Yeah, there was a decent hole made there by the offensive line, but even whenever he got through the hole, there were still uh, black and orange players waiting for him, and he was able to drag them through for the first down. Motion man is Leaper. He'll get the handoff. He has that cut back to the center. Right on the near hash mark. He's out close to midfield. They're going to mark him down just short of the 49-yard line. Gain of three, three and a half yards or so for Leap. 8.22 to go in the second quarter. Trenton again on the move with a 6 nothing lead over Kirksville. Trenton has been moving up and down this field, but the six points on the board are on a interception return by Jonathan Lamp. Yeah, and if they can get as close as they can last time, I think I think Boswell will come away with it with points, regardless of whether it's a kick or it's it's a score. Mullenix near sideline, motion man leaper, handoff Neff, Neff into Tiger territory, and he's close to the first down. Got a really good look at Colton's running style there. He was dragged down by Gage Colton, junior D lineman for Kirksville. I think we knew this about Colton, but it's nice to kind of actually get a good look at it from the press box. His legs are like pistons, and they never stop moving. Yeah, absolutely. He, he spends his entire run leaning forward, just running through tacklers. He uses the momentum of tacklers to bring him forward. 7.26 to go in the first half. Trenton facing third in inches. Motion man Berkey Bile. Hand off Neff. Nope, McCarter keeps. He is across to the 40-yard line. Cuts inside to the 30. Down the sideline, 25, 20. One man to beat. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. He puts his head down, and he is in. Touchdown, Bulldogs. A 45-yard touchdown run by Kale McCarter. We have seen that all season long where it'll be Neff. Neff, Neff, just test in the middle. Five yards here, six yards here, three yards here, and then boom. Kale McCarter hits you for the big one. Yeah, it's a really effective one-two punch that Trenton loves to go to. Neff, Neff is a great running back. McCarter is a great quarterback and a great runner. It, it works out really well whenever the offensive line wants to make it work and play as well. We have not talked nearly enough this season about the elusiveness that Kale McCarter has when he gets out in the open field. Yeah, he, he's really the glue that holds all these running backs together in, in just in terms of what he does with the football and w what his skill sets are. Slippery quarterback is Cale McCarter. Trenton's going to try to make up for that missed extra point and go for two. Twins near side. Motion man is Lamb going far side. Hand off. Neff. He's hit at the goal line and he falls forward to the one. That was a big time stop there by the Kirksville defense. Holding Trenton to 12. 
7-10 to go in the first half. It's Bulldogs 12 and Tigers nothing. We're back to Kirksville in 30 seconds on Z101.7 and YouTube. Welcome back here to Spain Hour Field in Kirksville. Seven minutes and ten seconds remaining in the second quarter. The 45-yard scoring run by Cale McCarter has the Bulldogs with a two-score lead, but the extra points have not been there yet for Trenton. An extra point miss, and then a handoff to a Neff that ended up a two-yard gain instead of the needed three on the two-point conversion. So 12 nothing Trenton. Mason Owen boots it away. Ball caught by Kirksville at the 20. Taking it back to the 30-yard line and uh, snapped down at the 36-yard line is Joe Sollers. So Sollers with the kick return of 16 yards. This will be Kirksville's fourth possession of the football tonight, and Kirksville's best field position has been after Trenton scores. Other than that, Kirksville's been trapped inside their 10-yard line. Yeah, they really have, and that's, that's been, you know, almost the plan by Coach Boswell is making sure that their offense drives it deep enough in the field that they have bad field position. Bohan hands it off. And diving forward as he got chopped down at the 36, diving to the 38-yard line was Gebhardt. Mason Owen, who just plays great football for this uh, Trent football team as a sophomore, he's able to submarine his blocker and get to Gebhardt's legs to stop him after the gain of two. Yeah, Mason Owen can play all over the field, especially defensively. I'm surprised they haven't put him at defensive back yet. I mean, the dude can play defensive line really well. The dude can play linebacker really well. He's a great talent as a sophomore. 6.34 to go in the first half. From the gun, here's Bohan on the direct snap, and the quarterback run. He makes the 40, tackled by Isaiah Kuhn at the 42-yard line. We'll see where it's marked. Yeah, right uh, halfway between the 42 and the 43 is the football. Probably closer to the 42 now that I eye it a little bit closer. We are at the halfway mark. Just about 6.10 to go in the second quarter from Spain Hour Field in Kirksville. 12-0 the lead for the Trenton Bulldogs over the Kirksville Tigers. Kirksville facing a third down and four from their own 42-yard line. Bohan looks down the field, takes a snap, throws, incomplete. Coming over with Spencer Harris. Kirksville's trying to get the ball to their big tight end, Robert Campbell. Looked like Campbell was open. The ball is just overthrown. A good throw would have got it there for Kirksville, but Spencer Harris was in the area. Yeah, he was in the area. I think he still probably, with the space he had, would have been able to bring it down, but he wouldn't have gotten any extra yardage with Spencer Harris there. Spencer Harris is a really disciplined and good tackler. Tanner Schilling to boot the football away from just about his own 30-yard line here for Kirksville. It has not been a really pretty-looking snap for Kirksville, and I have been floating and generally short-hopping Schilling on the couple of punts that he's had already. He scoots up to his 29, boots the football away, and it's going to be wow. right off the uh, corner of his foot. Hits at the Kirksville 48 and then rolls up the Trenton sideline to the 45-yard line. That was not a thing of beauty, but I wouldn't doubt one bit that he had, as he was kicking that ball, he might have had his eyeballs on the Bulldogs. There were two or three Bulldogs that got awfully close to a punt block. Yeah, it really didn't look like he had his eyes on the football on that one, honestly. I mean, that thing went like 20 yards with the roll. That was a really deflating punt for this Kirksville defense. Trenton gets a break on special teams. They're the uh, yards that you don't uh, spend a lot of time talking about at the end of the night, but the, that's, you know, if you're looking at maybe 30, 40, a yard kick with no return, that time it's about a 17-yard uh, kick with no return. McCarter under center. He sends Leeper in motion. He keeps the football at across the 45-yard line, and he gets the 49. I thought he was going to be brought down at the 46, and somehow he found one last crease and kind of dove forward for a gain of four. 
Yeah, you know, you talked about the elusiveness of McCarter that we saw in the 45-yard touchdown run. Another thing that I don't think we talk enough about is the willpower of McCarter. As we saw there at the very end of the touchdown run, he got wrapped up by two different guys and was still able to dive forward and get the ball barely over the goal line. The dude wants to get positive yardage and does not want to go down. Second and six, Bulldogs. Colton Colston getting some time here on the field. He will line up as a receiver to the near hash. Motion man is leaper. He gets the pitch. Thought he might throw. He's not. It's the sweep. He gets a block and then gets nailed at the 48-yard line. Stumbles forward to about the 46. That'll be a gain of five. I'm, no, I'm not sure if it was a great block out front there. They're trying to throw some blocks for a leaper, and it looked like Kirksville beat the, uh, the Trenton blocker to get Kirksville down to the turf as we have, I believe that's a Kirksville Tiger down at the 39-yard line. Yeah, it looks like the biggest problem on that play, uh, rather than, you know, maybe a bad blocker or a missed assignment, was more just the fact that there were more black jerseys out there waiting for Leaper than there were white jerseys waiting to protect him. And at the end of the uh, at the end of the day, that was a five yard gain. Yeah, still a good so, play. Yeah, yeah. You get five yard gains all night long, you can be a good football team. Uh, timeout on the field for the injury here for one of the uh, Kirksville young men. 4.53 to go in the second quarter. We are live from Kirksville tonight. It is Trenton 12 and Kirksville nothing. You can view the game if uh, that is your choice. If you have access to a computer, an iPhone, just uh, any way that you can get on the World Wide Web, go to YouTube.com, look for KTTN Radio, and then look for Live Trenton at Kirksville. Obviously, we're also broadcasting this game live on radio. Seems so old-fashioned when you kind of talk 2015 technology, but hey, it still works. A lot of people love radio. It's uh, been a great career for me, uh, to be certain. Z101.7 on your radio dial. If you want to do both, if you want to watch the game and you want to listen to the game, there's about a 25-second difference, so don't let that confuse you. For 12 nothing. it's been a good night thus far for the Trenton Bulldogs. We will uh, slip in a 30-second timeout. We're back with more after this from Kirksville. Welcome back here to Kirksville. I'm not sure who the young man is that uh, was injured there for Kirksville, but he is now up and on his feet. And it looks like it is Amos Gebhartz. That's a big that blow. Right. Yeah, That's number 25 starting, uh, starting running back. Not An injury that might have scared him as much as anything because he's walking off the field under his own power, but he had a quite an emotional hug there with one of his coaches. I, th I think the way that he was down and you know, immobile while they were looking at him and the way that he got up, I think it might be a concussion, though. So I don't know that he'll be returning to this game. Yeah, he, he went immediately to the bench, and he took a, a seat right at the uh, right at the bench behind his teammates. He's getting uh, He might be getting those concussion questions right now. 4.35 to go in the second quarter. Trenton facing third and one. McCarter hands it off to Neff. First down across the 45 down to the 43-yard line goes Colton Neff. You know, this is something you don't see very often, and you know, we, we do realize that Kirksville is rebuilding and struggling a little bit, but not very often you see a Class 2 football team that dominates a line of scrimmage against a Class 4 football team that has Class 4 size players. This is, a, this is generally a line that goes 240 to 300 pounds offensive and defensive line. Yeah, but this hasn't really been a one-way game every single play so far. I mean, I've seen a lot of give and take on both ends. Kirksville defensive line is putting up a lot of fight. Kirksville offensive line has had some good plays. So so that's definitely where the battle is being won right now in the trenches, but it's not a blowout by any means. Lamp goes in motion. He'll get the pitch. Going left side, he has room. He gets a block from Shields, and he's at the 35-30 and knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. You can't ask for more there uh, from Trey Shields. He's out there as the uh, pole blocker going from that uh, guard position. He got a good blow against the Kirksville player, and he knocked him to, to his feet. As a lead blocker, you knock somebody down, you've done your job. Yes, absolutely, and we, we've definitely seen that Trey Shields knows how to knock somebody down whenever he needs to. First and 10 off of that sweep play. It is a gain of 11 yards for Jonathan Lamp. Under four minutes to go on a Trenton-controlled first half. 
12 nothing for the Bulldogs, looking for victory number six on the season. McCarter sends Leeper in motion, hands it off to Neff through the middle. He got a quick burst across the 30, and he's down to the 26-yard line. Consistently, we're seeing Colton Neff break the line of scrimmage. He's getting two or three yards before he gets hit. They're having a little bit of trouble getting Colton past the linebackers, but uh, that's kind of where the other guys on this offense kind of help out with that too because Colton Neff, as good as he is, if the uh, linebackers are looking at him too much, that's where McCarter Leeper can get you. Yeah, we were speaking about earlier, this game's in the trenches and the defensive line aren't letting the linemen get up to the second level too much. And off Neff, 25-yard line and no more. He gets stood up there and knocked backwards by Cage Golden, one of about four or five Kirksville Tigers to make the stop. 3-12 to go in the first half. 12 nothing the lead for the Trenton Bulldogs. Was that Neff? I thought it was Schuler. Yeah, that was Schuler. Yeah, Schuler. That, that, I'm, I'm good for one a night on that one. <laughs> Especially here, this is a wonderful press box, but we are, for my liking anyway, a little bit away from the field. <coughs> As a, it's going to be Mullenix lined up near sideline, motion man is Leaper, and the handoff goes to Berkey Bile. He cuts to the 25, stays on his feet to the 20, along the far hash, he's to the 15-yard line. So Austin Berkebile gets a gain of 11 yards and a Bulldog first down. That's really the first misdirection running play to the diagonal hash that went to Austin Berkebile. Love the call by Coach Boswell. Yeah, it looked really similar to the uh, Travis Leaper play between the tackles that we've seen, but it, it just added that one little fake handoff, and that really made the difference there on that play. 2.40 to go in the first half. Trenton on the move, leading at Kirksville 12 to nothing. Mullenix lines up, receiver near sideline. Neff behind McCarter. Handoff, Neff. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage, but he's able to shed the hit and get a yard. So a yard for Colton Neff will make it second down and nine with 2.16 to go in the second quarter. I'm curious to see whether, you know, we've talked about this so far almost every game except for the Princeton game where Molinex had a, had a rather big body on him. We talk about Molinex out wide, one-on-one, -on -one, he usually has a smaller defensive back on him. And, you know, we've seen Trenton take advantage of that matchup in the past. I, I, I'm curious to see whether they do that tonight. It is Ian Richmond, the left cornerback here for Kirksville. As we're down to 150 to go in the second quarter, timeout. Bulldogs. 12 nothing the lead for the Trenton Bulldogs at the Kirksville Tigers. We're back in 30 seconds on Hot Country Z 101.7. Welcome back along with Jacob Marley, Tom Johnson with you from Spain Hour Field in Kirksville on the Kirksville High School campus. Beautiful facility, fairly new facility here with a lot of room around it. 12 nothing Bulldogs with the lead. The pitch play is going to go to Leeper. He makes a cut behind his uh, blocker, and he's going to be nailed at the 15 and fall forward to the 13-yard line. More side-to-side -side running and then forward running there for Leeper as he gets about two, and it's going to be third down and eight from just inside the 14-yard line. Is this maybe the shots at Cree in your mind here, which we haven't seen Trenton take that shot yet in the first half? Yeah, I think so, because it's third and eight or nine. We've seen Boswell. He likes to pass on these third and longer downs. I think this close to the end zone, with the, if you see the one-on-one -on -one matchup that you like, I think you go for him. I thought Cree might line up left side. He's going to line up right side to the near side of the field here at the 15. Neff lined up behind McCarter. And the handoff goes to Berkey Bile. He veers outside and is going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Kirksville had that play. Second time they've seen that on this drive. All sniffed out. Brayton Glaspie, 185 pound senior linebacker, came in and stopped Austin. It looked like Austin was looking for 
the lane to run to there. He never really did find it. He kind of veered in and out a couple of times. Well, there was a hole at one point, but, you know, we, we talked so highly about this kid. Jaden Whitney just lost his one-on-one -on -one block at the last second, and the linebacker was able to fight off of it and make the tackle in the backfield. Fourth and 11 as uh, Mullenix is going to line up to the left side. This may be the shot that Trenton takes at Creep, and there's going to be motion. The pass goes to Cree, makes the catch. He's going to go into the end zone for the Bulldog touchdown, but I think everybody saw the double motion there. In fact, Mullenix goes into the end zone. I had no emotion with the call. I look over at the Trenton fans and nobody was cheering over there. You got a smart crowd over there. They saw the double motion. I saw a couple of offensive linemen cheering, and I guess they didn't realize what happened. <laughs> I don't blame them because they're probably linemen on that left side. It was right side illegal motion for the Trenton Bulldogs. Haven't seen as many of those penalties, though. We saw a lot of, the, of those little uh, five-yard nicks against the Bulldogs last week. Not as many tonight. So they have that cleaned up. 19.2 seconds to go in the second quarter. Credit where credit is due. Kirksville has uh, not had a great uh, half here stopping the Trenton run, but the rubber band effect has been in effect for uh, Kirksville. Bend it, not a lot of break. Yeah, they haven't allowed uh, any points except for that one big touchdown by Kale McCarter in this game. McCarter back to pass, two-step drop. He's going to throw the ball toward the end zone. He looks for Mullenix. He makes the catch. I think he has it. Is he in? Touchdown, Bulldogs! What a catch. Spinning touchdown for Cree Mullenix in the front corner of the end zone. Left side is a touchdown run, or touchdown pass, I should say, of 18 yards. That is a dart to Kirksville, too. If you're Kirksville, you're thinking it's third, or it's fourth, and... 17, we got to get a stop here. And McCarter and Mullenix, as they seem to do at least once, every Friday night they connect for a big-time touchdown. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Tom, I don't know that I'll be able to talk here on the radio much often because I'm getting calls on the phone ready ready to have me coach for that great play that I just called right there. <laughs> they're, they're ringing me up already. Here's the extra point by Neff. It is on the way and good. Colton Neff bangs that one through. 14 seconds to go in the second quarter. It is Trenton Bulldogs 19, the Kirksville Tigers nothing. We're back with a kick to Kirksville in 30 seconds on Hot Country Z 101.7. Three touchdowns on the board. One a pick six. The other a McCarter run. The other a McCarter pass to Mullenix. Trenton scoring in all sorts of varieties of ways, and it's 19 to nothing. All the points in the second quarter for the black and gold. On their way so far to victory number six. Kick by Owen is going to be taken the other way at the 20-yard line by the Tigers and uh, jumping his way with a mighty leap. Out to the 36-yard line is Morgan Mays. So Mays able to bring that back about 16 yards at nine seconds to go in the second quarter. And uh, Trenton's offense has been, uh, it's been what the offenses have been, kind of at three, four, five yards of a cloud of dust, a couple of big plays. Defense has been dominating again. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly the game Trenton wants to play here. You know, dominating defense and then slowly but eventually effectively defense. Kirksville's going to take a knee They're here and run out the uh, final seven seconds of the first half. And well, isn't that kind of telling? You know, Kirksville, you figure maybe you try the hook and ladder or something. you got some athletes on the outside. But Trenton's been so dominant that Kirksville figures we've got seven seconds. Along with Jacob Marley, Tom Johnson back with you from Spainhower Field in Kirksville. We don't have much time before we get the second half started. As you can tell, if you're watching at home, Jake, what do you have for the uh, first half stats for the Bulldogs and the Tigers? I'll try to get them out of the way quick. Uh, Colton Neff, 11 carries, 54 yards. Kale McCarter, 6 carries, 73 yards, and a touchdown. Also in the passing game, he was 1 for 1 for 18 yards and a touchdown. That catch going to Cream Mullinex. Leeper, 9 carries to 48 yards. Jonathan Lamp, 2 carries, 13 yards. Logan Schuler, 1 carry, 3 yards. 
and Austin Berkey bottom, two carries, six yards. A lot of about four and a half, five yard averages in there, especially with Leap and or with uh, Lamp, uh, with Leaper and an F. Yeah, and with those averages, you know, you might wonder why we're leading 19 to zero. It's because you look at those carries. We've got, we've been holding the ball this whole time. We've had, we've had offensive opportunities the whole game. We haven't let them hold on to the ball very long. And Kirksville's defense can't continue to be out there trying to hold back our run. Eventually, you, you can be in as good a shape as as you think you can be in. They're going to wear down in the second half if they're on the field that much. Yeah, I've I've never personally done it before, but I can tell that trying to tackle Colton F looks tiring. That's for sure. One of those guys where if you're playing defense for the Bulldogs, you're glad he's on your team. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Twelve minutes go up on the clock. A couple of score updates. The Cardinals leading the Cubs one to nothing in a pitcher's duel in St. Louis in the eighth. The Royals rallied with a run late to beat Houston five to four. That series is even at one. Texas leads Toronto two games to none. The Rangers in thirteen. One in Toronto, 6-4 this afternoon. Bulldogs will get the football first here in the second half. Kick is going to be taken by, I believe that's Logan Schuler out across the 35-yard line to the 38-yard line. That'll be a kick return of just about 15 yards. An awfully good field position for the Bulldogs, who I'm sure would just like to grind out. You know, about a 69 or 61-yard uh, touchdown drive here to start the third quarter. Yeah, I think that's the ideal thing that they're looking for here is just a nice slow drive, you know, don't have to run it down the field as fast as we can, just ground and pound, tire down the defense, coming out of the half, they're probably already a little bit not quite warm, and get another score coming out of the half. Mullenix, who had the late touchdown catch for the Bulldogs in the second quarter, lines up wide to the right, under center is McCarter, and he will keep. He's across the 40-yard line and to the 43. It's interesting when I watch Kale keep it because he usually goes about one step over from where Neff goes through, but he'll almost use Neff as a little lead blocker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he, he, he runs that read option really well. He goes right around the running back's back so that by the time the defense realizes he doesn't have the ball, there Kale McCarter comes right up behind him. So Trenton's uh, varsity defense here is going on just about two games plus of shutout football. Second down and eight. His motion man is Leeper, takes the snap, and he's out across the 45. A good burst right at the end of his run. He spins at the 45, and he kind of stumbled his way backwards, close to the first down. They're going to mark him about a yard short to the 48-yard line. I love the way that Travis Leeper finished that run. He had his best Colton F impersonation there to get an extra three yards after first contact. Yeah, we don't see the strength on display a lot of Travis Leeper. We're starting to see it more and more now as they run these plays between the tackles, but he's really got it in him whenever he's a runner, and I, I think that's what helps him get the positive yardage that he does, especially on that play. 10.45 to go in the third quarter. Trenton up. 19 to nothing, handoff, Berkey Bile, he's to midfield, stays on his feet, stumbles forward to the 45-yard line to the 40, and he drags a Tiger tackler along the Bulldog sideline to the 38. Every running back that Coach Boswell goes to seems like they're not getting hit at the line of scrimmage, and that's it. They're gaining three, four, five yards, and then they're getting another four or five yards after contact. Yeah, it really seems like what the game plan has been doing so far and it's been working is they just ground and pound right up the middle, maybe get one first down, get a first down in five yards or so, and then they run this trick play or an option play or run it around the side with Lamp, and it just picks up great yardage. We have seen very little in the traditional option in, in where you see McCarter maybe keep it around end and then either keep the ball or pitch it out to, say, a leap or a lamp. We haven't seen that at all tonight. Trenton hasn't really need to go to it. Yeah, we haven't seen the triple option too much. We've mainly just seen the read option with McCarter and Neff, and then we've seen the uh, play between the tackles with, with Leaper, and then we've seen this, this new fake handoff trick play to uh, uh, Austin Berkeybile. Let's go through the district standings. We were talking about the potential of Trenton winning out and maybe getting to a top three seed. That's going to be difficult. Although, let's kind of throw this into the equation tonight. I haven't seen a score from here. I may look for it. But the two teams that have beat us, can you name them off the top of your head, Jake? Uh, Lexington and uh, Higginsville. They're playing each other tonight. <laughs> so Lexington is in the three spot in district standings. i got to think that Lexington, if they beat Higginsville, I'm going to be surprised. I'll just throw that out there. I think Higginsville's a better team. I think Lexington can play with them. But if Higginsville wins that game, Trenton is and let's throw this out there too leblanc is losing 17 to 7 at the half to lafayette trenton could win and the two teams are chasing in three and four could lose it could be a really good night 
Yeah, I know, I know that you have to play a full game of football, but I'd like to see our first half versus Higginsville compared to Lexington's first I'll half. I'll look for that score, too. There's a pass in the flat. Catch made by Mullenix. He has it at the 35 to the 30. Sprints out of the sideline. 15 to the 10 to the 5, and he breaks a tackle and breaks the plane. Touchdown, Cree Mullenix. It's a very simple out pattern. He makes the catch at the 40, and he just out sprinted Kirksville for about 30 yards, and then he outpowered Kirksville for the last five yards, and it's a 38-yard touchdown strike in the near flat to Cree Mullenix, and Cree made that look really easy. Cree at Mullenix, a superior athlete. He showed it on the, on those skills. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Cree and McCarter are playing out of their minds tonight. I, I haven't seen... Uh, uh, a, a better game from these two guys yet, yeah, particularly. McCarter, he's doing a great job of throwing the ball and running the football, and uh, Cree is looking like Rob Gronkowski out there. You know, he's too big to be covered, and he's, he's, he's fast enough to where he can outrun the defensive backs. Gronk Cree with the touchdown. 10 5 to go in the third quarter. The extra point by Neff is good. 26 nothing Bulldogs. We're back with a kick in 30 seconds on KGLZ. Ten oh five to left to go in the third quarter. Apologize there for the technical difficulties. Uh, we are back from Kirksville as the uh, kick is away by Owen. He drives it back to the Tigers at the 15-yard line and getting some room out to the 40-yard line and down to the 42 as a flag flies is the kick returner for Kirksville. That is Joe Sollers with uh, one of the better uh, kick returns for Kirksville tonight, but uh, Kirksville seems like one of the teams uh, here, and it so often happens when you're 0-7, it seems like something good happens for you, and you get one of those flags uh, flying at your feet, and that happened again there to the Tigers. Yeah, that was on uh, Morgan Mays, number two there, uh, the, the kick return blocker, and it was on Spencer Harris, and Spencer Harris is a good athlete. You're going to have to do something illegal or special to get a block on him whenever he's running down the field. Here's the scoreboard for tonight. We mentioned some of the good news here thus far with a couple of the teams. We know of one of the teams that Trenton is chasing that is down. Lafayette leading LeBlond 17-7 at the half. East Buck and Lathrop are involved in a scoring fest. It's East Buchanan over Lathrop 32-20. Officially, the call against Kirksville is a hold. So that's going to be called from the spot of the foul, which was at the 40. So the ball will move back to the 30-yard line. I'm not sure if I'm going to find anything on uh, Lexington and Higginsville. It seems that Higginsville, at least with our Coke Locker Room show, for whatever reason, I've always thought it's because their official name is Lafayette County and people look for Higginsville rather than Lafayette County. It seems that Higginsville is tough to find. Well, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm not at all questioning the call or, mm -hmm. or, or thinking any differently about the call made, but, you know, this the the streak the Trenton has been on and the standings right now really makes you think about that two-point conversion that we missed against Lexington in that call. Well, it does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Not not against it at all, but it makes you think about it. It does. It certainly does. Back to pass. There's a pass into the flat. Catch made at the 35-yard line and out to the 37 for Kirksville is Blake Lewis. So Lewis on the catch. I was completely uh, unsuccessful in trying to find a Lexington Higginsville score. I did a search for Lexington on my Twitter account, and the last uh, mention of Lexington was from seven hours ago, and about 90% of the Lexington mentions were Lexington, Kentucky, where the Kentucky Wildcats hang out. <laughs> so I may be searching for a while, but we'll see if we can come up with that score. 26 nothing. Bulldogs on top, 9.27 to go in the third. Looking down the hash, throwing down the hash, and getting it to his man, Blake Lewis, who is going to score over the top of the Bulldog defense, his sophomore quarterback, Bohan. So Bohan to Lewis for the touchdown. And it is, you've mentioned this many, many times, if there's one Achilles heel of the Bulldogs, it's play action, getting behind the secondary, 
and Bohan to Lewis do it that time for a 65-yard touchdown pass. Kirksville's on the board with 9.17 to go in quarter number three. Well, the, the pass play Kirksville's been running so far this entire game has been a, a little scattered, quick curl route where they have an empty set and then all of their receivers take about two steps and turn around and look for the football. That time they ran an all-go route and the safeties just weren't quite ready for it, beat them over the top. Perfect pass, too. Yes, absolutely. There's the uh, keeper by Bohan through the middle. He gets spun at the goal line, and he is into the end zone with one spin. He gets in for two, and the Bulldogs don't have this one wrapped up just quite yet. 9.17 to go in the third quarter. The score is Trenton 26, Kirksville 8. Bulldogs get the football in 30 seconds on Hot Country Z 101.7. Here's what we're doing because on video, if we keep the mics on or live uh, during the breaks, everything's going over video and they're everything we're talk talking about and blah blah blah. So I am turning off all of our mics during your break. Okay. Big Along with Jacob Marley, Tom Johnson back with you from Kirksville High School. The score with 9.17 to go in the third quarter. Trenton 26, Kirksville 8. I got onside kick in the back of my head here. Bulldogs have to be cognizant they are. The ball is going to be kicked into the direction of White. And he gets hog tied at the 40-yard line. Feel bad for uh, Jeffrey there. It looked like he had the ball. He was excited. He was looking for a spot to run. All of a sudden, he had a guy grabbing him by the shoulder pads, and he figured, I better not fumble the football. Take the uh, take the 40-yard line and, and call it good. Yeah, he, he was definitely excited there. <laughs> he took about 40 steps and only moved about three yards. <laughs> he so. went to his left and said, oh, I don't like it there. He went to the right. He said, oh, I don't like it there. And by the time he went back to the left, he had a big old Kirksville Tiger hanging on his shoulder pads. Hey, you know, Friday Night Lights are for everybody. He is young. And uh, he didn't true. fumble the football. Yes. That's the first thing you tell him. If you get that football on the kickoff, don't fumble it away. He didn't. First down in 10, Bulldogs. Ball at the 40. Lamp in motion. Here's the handoff to uh, Neff. Breaks a tackle at the 44. And uh, drags a Kirksville Tiger. Mr. John Bohan to the 47-yard line. Gain of 7 for Colton Neff. Here's where if you're the Trenton offense, you want to reestablish your dominance in this ball game. Kirksville has a little bit of momentum. Kirksville still has a long way to go, but if Trenton puts points on the board here, it just it, it puts another seed of doubt into Kirksville, who's already got to be dealing with a lot of doubt at 0-7. Yeah, the game still has to be won down in there in the trenches. The offensive line still has to be beating the Kirksville defensive line who's been putting up a lot of fight. And if they can continue to do that, they'll continue to win this game. Second down and three for the Dogs as Kale McCarter steps under center. He sends Berkey Bile in motion. He hands the ball to Austin. And Austin gets chopped down right at the first down marker. What do you think there? First down or no? Uh, depends on where this looks like they're going to spot him the first down. Yep, first down. I think I'm, I'm not sure of this because I'm not sure if Trenton was right at the 40 to start that drive, but it was close. I think all the Bulldogs had to do was get that football to the chalk line at the 50, and it's sitting. You couldn't put that football more on the center of this field if you wanted to. <laughs> you really couldn't. <laughs> it's right in the middle of the big orange K with the big Mizzou Tiger style, a Tiger head here at Kirksville. First and 10 Bulldogs, hand off Neff. He gets spun around at the 46-yard line, and uh, Colton Neff style gets spun at the 48, and he's ahead to the 46 for a gain of four. Yeah, it's exactly Colton's Neff style. Just just fight through the tackle and pick up positive yardage even if you're falling to the ground while you do it. For a guy who's always between the hash marks dealing with linebackers, it seems like nobody ever gets a clean shot on 33. It really doesn't. I think that's because the offensive line blocks really well, first of all. And second of all, Neff just doesn't let that happen. You know, good running backs stay elusive enough. Second and five. Uh, there is a little bit of confusion right at the uh, point of contact. And I think McCarter kept that football. <coughs> It was a, pr a pretty good decision because Kirksville had that one blown up. So it'll be a no gain on the play. Your concern about that is there's so much defensive line penetration 
and McCarter's handing the ball to Neff. He's trying to decide, do I want to keep it or not? You just say, you know, keep the football. They beat us on that play. Don't fumble it. Yeah, absolutely. The defensive line of Kirksville has been their strength so far in this defense. Their linebackers haven't shown a lot, and their defensive backs have been beat by Cree Mullenix. So, you know, their defensive line is playing really well. They, they got penetration on that play. Third and five. Here is the pitch going out wide to Leaper. He's going to get a flag on the play. He's uh, out on the uh, near a pitch across the 40 to the 35 yard line, and now we're going to get a late flag, and I think that's going against Kirksville. I saw that late. Did somebody come up and give Tucker Franklin kind of a two-hander right below the uh, shoulder pads? No, that, that was uh, um, Jaden Whitney who got the shove there by Morgan Mays, and he just got the holding call on the kickoff. He might be done tonight. So we're getting a hold against Trenton, and then a dead ball personal foul against Kirksville. I believe these penalties are going to offset. I've always thought, you know, if you get 10 on one team and 15 on the other team, I don't know if they should offset. I always feel like you should at least go five against Kirksville, but not the way that the rule goes. Well, that that was just that was a honestly just a dumb penalty by the Kirksville player there. I mean, it was all the way after the play, just some kind of personal vendetta against Jaden Whitney. Decides he's going to come give him a little push after yeah. the play. You know, there's no, there's no reason for that. If if you have a problem with a guy, take it out on him during the play. You know, don't wait till after play after the play and give him a little push. Not an excuse, but it's reasoning. You're 0 seven. It's 26 to eight, and you've been uh, have Trenton guys leaning on you for the last two and a half quarters. Yeah, I'm I'm sure that's what it is. I'm sure it's some kind of frustration, especially against an offensive lineman. You know, as a defensive player, you hate getting blocked. So I'm sure it's just frustration on the Kirksville side. So he started at the 45. If these offset, I think it's a do over. Put the ball down at the 45. It should be third down and five, just like it was before. Yeah, that's what it should be. Yeah, offset. Like that's what they're right? doing. No, they, they're, rep, well, now, oh, here's what they're doing. Since it was a dead ball foul, Jake, uh huh. the 10 got marked off against Trenton, but then 15 got marked off against Kirksville because it was after the play, so it's an automatic first down. Yeah, so it's a, so it's a net yardage of yeah. plus five. Which dead ball means it's after the whistle. Right. If it was a fir personal foul before the whistle had blown, it, it's 10, 15, <laughs> and y y you call it a draw. Not a draw if it's after the whistle. That's a really hurtful penalty. Automatic first down for the Bulldogs. So first and 10, motion man is Berkey Bile. Hand off, Neff. He cuts to his right, to the near hash. He's across the 35, and he takes about, oh, seven or eight Kirksville Tigers to the 31-yard line, a gain of nine for Colton Neff. It wouldn't be a Friday night either without Neff and McCarter out there with their shirts untucked. <laughs> they, they're never tucked in, are they? I, I mean, whenever, <laughs> whenever you're a good enough player, coaches, they don't say anything about yeah, it. They, yeah. say, they say, you do you. You will, you will hear from that if you have your stuff untucked on a basketball court. Mm -hmm. Football, I guess it don't matter. I mean, too, too much other stuff going on. Really, it, it's more just about making sure your team looks sharp than anything. But, you know, if, you, if you're playing a really good game, they're not going to mind too much. And off Berkey Bile, flashing left side. He cuts back to the middle, then to the 30-yard uh, line where he got knocked backwards. But he got just across the 30. I think that's going to be good for another Trenton Bulldog first down. You hit the nail right on the head when you said it wasn't a very smart play for Kirksville because the fact it was after the whistle, not that 15 should ever be tolerated if you're a head coach, you know, talking to your players, and it won't, I'm sure. But the fact it's a dead ball, just it killed Kirksville on that because Kirksville looked like they were in position to maybe stop Trenton on downs or force a punt. Yeah, and, and it's just, you know, like I said, it's just it's pointless to do it after the play. There's no reason for that. You're always going to get caught after the play. And, you know, to, to do something like that, it just it's it's just a, it's a, it's a dumb play. Hand off, Neff, and he did, always at that forward running ahead style. He gets hit at the 26, and he bounces forward to the 20, about a half yard short of the first down. It looks like a tiring Kirksville defense. Neff was getting four yards, five yards in the first half. Now Neff is averaging about nine yards in the second half. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though, if you see Neff running the football and he is straight up and down, you might want to check your numbers because that's probably not Colton Neff, the way that he runs the football. Logan Schuler now in the backfield behind Cale McCarter. We'll see if Logan gets the football here. Uh, he no, does not. Cale keeps it. He's out to the 20, 15-yard line, cuts inside across the 10, stays on his feet, and he rumbles forward to the 8. Everybody bit on big Logan Schuler there, and Kale is he so good at doing. I'm sure he doesn't say this to the defense, but he probably feels like saying that. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's what he's thinking. And then, mm. you know, whenever he's able to, 
to get by the defenders and keep chugging for a first down. He's he's probably thinking, you know, I'm not. I'm just as strong as Neff is. The nine yard line is where Kale's forward momentum was stopped. 4:32 to go in the third quarter. Motion man, Lamp. He gets the pitch going out wide left side at the 15. Looks for a block. Gets it to the 10, to the 5, to the pylon. Touchdown standing. It is a touchdown run of 9 yards for Jonathan Lamp. You mentioned it earlier in the night. You wanted to see how fast Jonathan was on this field turf. He showed it there. He outraced Kirksville to the pylon for six. Yeah, he had one lead blocker and two Kirksville defenders after him. The lead blocker took care of one, and Lamp Speed took care of the other, and he was able to get in the end zone on that play. It got to be so demoralizing for Kirksville. That's what I mentioned at the beginning of the drive. It turns out to be a 61-yard touchdown drive. Kirksville had just cut the lead to 26-8. to A little bit of hope for the, uh, the orange and black, and Trenton just uh, shoves it right down the field for six. Yeah, and that's a great play call for a really tired defense. Throw it around the edge, make him chase Lamb down. A tired defense is going to be able to make that play. Great point, Jacob. 4.21 to go in the third quarter. It is 32-8, to Bulldogs. Extra point coming up from Colton Neff. Snap is good. Kick is on the way. Kick is good. Trenton 33, Kirksville 8 with 4.21 to go in the third quarter. The long, uh, scoreless uh, string by the Trenton defense ends here in the third, but the Trenton offense answers. We're back with a kick in 30 seconds on KGOZ. Test, test, test. Jonathan Lamp, second touchdown of the night. He has one on defense, a pick six of 30 yards, one on offense, a nine-yard sprint to the far sideline. Trenton's got most of their points into this end zone. The one off to our right, the one that goes back to the west here at Kirksville. I think Trenton has all their points. Second quarter going that direction, third quarter going that direction. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't recall them scoring on the other end. Nope, they haven't. The uh, kick will be taken on the move by Kirksville's Joe Sollers. He cuts all the way to the 30, down the sideline to the 40, and knocked out of bounds right about the 41-yard line. Mason Owen, I don't know if he's going to get credit for the tackle, but he's uh, in the area. As you look at this Trenton team, Jacob, from week one to week eight, Big game with Concordia, senior night next week. Where have you seen this team improve the most? I would say offensive line play. You know, you know, throughout throughout this season, the offense has been kind of inconsistent, you know, playing well one quarter, playing not so well the next. Offensive line has really stepped it up and been able to get to the second level. Bohan scrambling out of the pocket. He's hit at the 40 and nailed at the line of scrimmage. He gets back to the 41, the original line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Cree Mullenix. Bulldogs had a tough call go against him. We were kind of irate up here in the press box. We thought there should have been a safety credited to Mason Owen on a sack of Bohan in the first quarter. Didn't go the Bulldogs' way. And I don't, it bothered the coaching staff, but the guys just said, okay, we're going to have to find other ways to get it done. Well, I, I think that they just knew that that's not something that you can, you know, you can win that battle against the refs. The refs are going to say that they had the better viewpoint and that, that they're going to know what's going on. And, you know, you, you can't dispute that call with the refs. Second and 10. Here's Bohan on the keeper. 41-yard line and no more. You know what that play reminds me of there? The quarterback keeper by Bohan. We saw at least a good 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere in that area. Quarterback keepers like that for South Harrison last week. And every last one of them went for about that, a half yard at most. See, I, I thought you were going to say it reminded you of Princeton. They, they had yeah, a lot yeah, more success too. than that. Yeah, that too. Yeah, their Trenton's defense has been pretty stout against the quarterback draw. Uh, Princeton had a little bit more success on it, but I think you can credit that to that great athlete they have at quarterback. Twins now make it trips to the right side and twins to the near side. Five wide here for Kirksville. Bohan in the gun. So spreading out, Trenton Bohan stepping into the pocket, steps away from a potential sack. He's to the 40-45 and nailed at the 45-yard line. Hustling play made by Tucker Franklin out in the open field to stop Bohan after a gain of four. Yeah, 
And that was a different look there by their uh, passing game. Normally, as I, as I mentioned earlier, the only two plays I had seen from them was a, a scatter inside curl route or the all go. It looked like kind of a, a, a post route and then a, 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 an inside route there by the wide receivers. And it didn't fool Trenton, though, that's for sure. On to punt the football will be Tanner Schilling at Kirksville. Takes the high lofting punt. Pretty good pressure there by Mason Owen. The kick will be right around Travis Leeper. He was awfully close to that football as it hit right near his legs. Fortunately for Leap, it didn't hit him. It takes a Kirksville roll down to the 17-yard line. It's pretty scary there. I think Leap wanted to fair catch that one. Then he might have decided against it. And at that point, you're hoping that football hits and it doesn't bounce into your legs. Yeah, you got to get out of the way there if you're a leaper. Thankfully, you know, nothing bad happened. But I think that's a play where when, when they watch the film on Monday or maybe whenever a leaper goes to the sideline, Coach Sager, who is a special teams coach, says, hey, Leap, you need to get out of the way next time. <laughs> yeah, he'll mention it to him, and tra you know, Travis will say yes. And, and you know, leaper's probably thinking as he's being told that, I should know better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he already knows. First and 10 Bulldogs from the 17-yard line. 33-8, to eight, Trenton on top, 2.03 to go in the third. Motion man is Lamp. Here's the keeper by McCarter. That had all the looks of a busted play. He ran out to his right. Looked like he thought Lamp was going to be there. Jonathan wasn't, so he kind of held the football out, realized there was no help, put his head down, and he got two. I was actually there the first day of practice where they told Kale, listen, if the play blows up and you're going to have those, you're going to have plays that just some guy moves the wrong direction, Put your head down and do the best you can with it. Yeah, and Kale's done a fantastic job at that. We've seen it all season. You know, there's been at least one bad play where they haven't been able to get the ball to the right person, and Kale's made positive yardage out of those. Kale that time hands it off to Schuler. He's across the 20 and burrows his way to the 21-yard line. 120 to go in the third quarter. This has been an interesting little series with Kirksville over the last four years, Jake. It seems like either we play tremendously well or Kirksville has taken it to us. And there's really had, that hadn't been very much in between. Yeah, I, I would say that this game is on a complete opposite track, though. I would say that this game, we've really just kind of out-talented Kirksville, mm -hmm. and Kirksville hasn't played that great. We've we played about where we expect to play. Here's the handoff to Leeper. He's out to the 30-yard line. Thought he might, uh, to the 25, a bigger part. Thought he might get close to the 30. But he's going to be stopped right near the first down marker. See, the game I remember is the first game we had against Kirksville in this series four years ago. I think we beat them 24-7, to mm -hmm. and it was by far the best game we played that season. Yeah, we yeah, I really remember good that. that. Yes. We were really good that night. Yeah, we were amped up on the sidelines. I remember that exact game because Kirksville was one of those games where we thought, and hey, we might be able to squeeze it out if mm -hmm. we play really mm -hmm. hard, and we played, you know, just out of our minds and, and really took it to them. 35 seconds to go in the third. Of course, the very next year we come to Kirksville, and it was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Highlighted by a play I, I don't want to remember, but I'll, I'll mention it just for uh, the sake of uh, being accurate. Here is uh, Leaper. He fumbles a football in the backfield. It is loose at the 25-yard line, and the Bulldogs got that one back. Kirksville was able to twist Travis Leaper around, and as he was twisting, he just lost the football. I'm not sure if he lost it on his own, if the momentum of the twist took it away, or if somebody for uh, Kirksville got a hat on that, but it took a good bounce for the Bulldogs right back to the black and gold. It'll be second down and 13. The previous play that Leeper had before that fumble did result in a first down. Yeah, it, it looked by the way that he fell after the ball came out that someone got their hands on it and then ripped it out. And as they ripped it out, he kind of spun around. 33-8 after three quarters of play. Trenton with the lead. Fourth quarter's up in a minute on Z101.7. Second down, second down and 14. 
Welcome back to Spain Hour Field in Kirksville. Second down, 13 for the Bulldogs. You now move the ball from right to left on your dial in the fourth quarter. Hand off Schuler. He's across the 25-yard line, stays on his feet, gets shoved backwards to the 28-yard line. That is a good old-fashioned football scrum out there between the 25 and the 30. Yeah, yeah, it was really impressive. That, that Schuler, you know, whenever he does his, nef, his best Neff impression, so to speak, refusing to go down by tacklers. I just wish they would have given Schuler like a 42 number. <laughs> so 37 and 33 just look too similar. Well, I'll tell you, I know for a fact that both Schuler and Neff have had that their whole careers. Yeah, so. they're, they're not changing at this point. <laughs> Seniors, you're not giving up your numbers for the good of the, <laughs> the broadcast team. We're 40 seconds deep into the fourth quarter. Trenton in cruise control here toward victory number six. Here's a run through the middle across the 30 into the 35-yard line. I believe it was Schuler. That was Neff. That's the first time I've done it that way, though. I, I mean, at least you're switching it up on us. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, I didn't want to be completely disrespectful to Logan by keep on calling you his that runs now, so I figured I'd have an F from and, and call it Schuler just to even things out. Yeah, you got to balance it yes, out. Yes, exactly, point. exactly. 10:52 to go in the fourth quarter. Are you enjoying her back and forth there, Logan? <laughs> he's just, yeah, he's, just, he's having a blast. He's laughing. He's in a good mood because his club is up by 25. Timeout on the field. 10.42 to go in the fourth quarter. It is the Trenton Bulldogs taking it to the Kirksville Tigers in Kirksville tonight. It is 33-8. to eight. We're back in 30 seconds on your home of the Bulldogs, Hot Country Z 101.7 and KTTN Radio's YouTube channel. Gotcha. Okay. If, if, if you can get on Twitter and you can find any Lexington Hidden Middle School at all, feel free. Or maybe, maybe that Twitter is it. I don't know if you have any websites you can check. Okay. Miles Brown and St. Louis is Wales to the Cardinals. Zero to the 10.42 to go in quarter number four, along with Jacob Marley, Tom Johnson back with you from Kirksville. 33-8, to eight, Trenton Bulldogs with the lead. The Cardinals have beaten the Cubs 4 to nothing in St. Louis. So that rivalry, NLDS goes St. Louis one game to Chicago's none. And now Dodgers and Mets, he's starting up in L.A. as New York plays the Los Angeles in a battle of the coast. Timeouts, Kirksville. I'm not going to take two timeouts in a row, so... We'll sit here and talk about this uh, Trenton Bulldog team a little bit. You're pointing. What are you seeing? Uh, foul against Kirksville. Uh, oh, gotcha. Okay. There's a five-yard penalty against Kirksville. So this is why I have a videographer here. He fills me in on five-yard penalties against Kirksville. And I'll go to my color analyst because I didn't see it. Did you see it, Jake? Uh, I saw the flag throw, and I wasn't watching close enough to uh, <laughs> actually see the penalty. Uh, he had like it was intentional grounding. I'm, I know it's not intentional grounding, and that's not a five-yard penalty, but we'll take it. Five-yard penalty goes against Kirksville. Here is the keeper by McCarter. Around right end, stays on his feet, and he's to the 44. I feel like I'm going to be uh, saying that staying on his feet in my sleep. That's a literally what these Trenton running backs and quarterbacks have been doing all night long. Shedding the first uh, tackle and then getting an extra couple of yards. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been speaking about how these linebackers, you know, they just aren't very effective one-on-one. -on -one. They need multiple guys to surround these Trenton run, run, uh, running backs. excuse me. And so as long as we can keep that defensive line blocked, Trent's going to have success with this running game. Kirksville will end the regular season next week at Fulton. Kirksville is sitting in the eighth spot right now in Class 4, District Number 7. Here is the uh, handoff to, I believe that is a leaper, not getting very far. Good defensive penetration that time for the Tigers as the leaper gets stuffed for a loss of two. 9.48 to go in the fourth quarter of play. 33-8, to eight, the lead for the Bulldogs, who are facing third and nine. Normally, I'd say the Bulldogs would be looking to pass the ball here. Uh, I think they're going to run the ball to keep the clock moving. Yeah, that's what I think. With a lead like this, I don't think you take the risk of trying to throw a pass because, you know, the Bulldogs, they don't really throw it deep. They would like to go to that slant to Mullinex or for, for a, the first or second time, we saw them throw it up to Mullinex. So I don't think you throw a short pass because it's an interception. Lathan Croy's out there as a uh, left-end position here for the Bulldogs as the handoff goes to the second man through. What a move there by Lamp. He only got five. 
He went into a he went into spin cycle there though, and he he spun a Kirksville attacker right into the turf about the 41 yard line. That might have been the best one on one move I've seen from any bulldog all season long. Yeah, see that's what happens whenever you hit the circle button at exactly the right time when the defender's coming up, you get the running back a nice spin move, or, or maybe that's just Madden. I'm not sure. It, it looked pretty similar. All of the above. Back in my era was Sega. <laughs> Sega. Fourth and five. Bulldogs punting for the first time tonight. That's a good stat. Here is Colton Colston. Boots it away. Drives it to the 30. It's going to take a hop there and be taken by Sollers. He gets a little bit of room out to the 35-yard line, and then he gets wrestled down by Colton Neff. I'll tell you what. Sollers, who I think has been there a tournament the whole game, he's had a lot of speed to him, and I've seen some elusiveness from him. I'm, I'm wondering why they don't try and get him the ball more. I think he plays wide out. I guess the quarterback's just not seeing him open enough. I'd, I'd work him in as a running back, quite yeah, honestly. Yeah, he's, or, he looks like one. Maybe like a leaper. Hand him the ball, maybe mm -hmm. get him on the edge, and you'll throw a little pass to him. Yeah, I, I think it might be why we're seeing right here Travis Leaper's over here com covering him, and Leaper's a good defensive back. Bohan from the gun, looks down the seam. Nice catch made by Blake Lewis, and he fumbles the football away at the 42, and the Bulldogs are going to hop on that one at the 49-yard line. So Lewis gets hit at the 42. It rolled through a couple of pairs of hands, and then Cale McCarter was Johnny on the spot, picking up the football at the 49-yard line. It's the second uh, turnover of the night against the Kirksville offense. Remember, the first one was the first play of the uh, second quarter. Then it ended up being a 30-yard interception return for Jonathan Lamp. That's a big-time hit. Uh, somebody for the Bulldogs. I didn't catch the guy, but uh, put his hat right on the football and knocked it away from Blake Lewis. Yeah, that was just a really, really unfortunate play by Kirksville. Not only the fact that they fumbled, but the fact that they fumbled it right in the middle of a triangle of three Bulldog defenders who were there to, to, to jump on it. Rolled into the Bulldog secondary rather toward the offensive line. Yeah, that, that's just unlucky. Colton Colston lined up near sideline here for Trenton. Leaper goes in motion. Spencer Harris now takes over as quarterback as he hands the ball off for a gain of one, maybe two, to Logan Schuler. Second and eight coming up for the Bulldogs. I was about to ask, when do you think we'll see Spencer Harris? And it's on this possession right here. Bulldogs have this one. Yeah, have I seen Stranger Things? Yeah, but the Bulldogs have this one all but wrapped up, I do believe. I'm comfortable in saying. Yeah, I, I would be pretty comfortable in saying that. It's, it, it, with the way this Bulldog team plays, we can say that earlier in the game because their defense plays so well. Very true. Harris will uh, pitch the ball out. He rolled it back to a leaper. That's not the way you want to get it done. But it, uh, as the football is done tonight, it took a fortunate bounce for Trenton. You don't want to be rolling on the option, the, the ball back to Leaper. It looked like Spencer was kind of losing the ball, and I think he got hit as he was trying to pitch that, too. So it was a combination of things. It could have turned out to be a, a really bad play for Trenton. Bulldogs got fortunate. Yeah, it looks like he tripped as he was trying to pitch it. I don't know what caused the trip, whether it was a defender's arm who got in there or maybe he just tripped over his own feet. But, you know, just an unfortunate play, not necessarily bad mechanics by Spencer Harris. 7 12 to go in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs leading 33 to 8. Trenton and facing a third and 13. Schuler in the backfield. He gets the football. He will test the middle and he'll get a yard. That's tough sledding there because Kirksville knows Trenton's going to run the football. You know that Trenton's not going to go to the air and try to rub it in or any stretch of the imagination. Trenton wants to run clock, so you're telling Logan, okay, everybody for Kirksville knows you're going to run it up the middle. Try to get yards anyway. <laughs> that, that, that's whenever Logan turns into a, to his offensive line. He says, hey, everyone knows we're going to run the ball up the middle. Let's try and get some positive yards anyway. Give me some support, please, amigos. <laughs> Colton Colston, second punt here in about a minute. 6.28 to go in the fourth quarter. Trenton up 33-8. to eight. Colston with the boots. Caught at the 15-yard line looking for him, making a bulldog miss. Is Sollers. He's out to the 20, 25, and right down at the 26-yard line. Colton F is uh, out there like he's just uh, roping cattle in the backyard. Yeah, it, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah just uh, Sollers is a good player. We just kind of uh, propped him up as maybe the uh, most impressive player we've seen for Kirksville tonight. And that was just that was a strong hand attack where Neff got him by the shoulder pads. He just ripped him down. Yeah, I, I would say that so I would agree with you on that point about Sollers. I would say either Sollers or the defensive line as a whole because they've really impressed me, probably giving the Trenton offensive line a lot of struggle this season. 
or this game, excuse me. Here's the handoff through the middle, hesitating, looking for room, and finding Mr. Trey Shields is the running back for Kirksville. Not getting very far there was Marshall Cook. Looked like Cook. He kind of had that uh, same look uh, that uh, Trenton had a little bit earlier tonight. i got to remember which Trenton guy we're going to talk about here. I can't remember who it was. Who was our kick returner? Kind of went every, every which way but loose. Uh, I think it was Jeffrey White. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he had the same look as White. Where he, he got the football there, did the Kirksville running back. He looked left and right. He ended up with a big old uh, face mask worth of Trey Shields. There's a pass to the 34-yard line. Caught by Lewis for a gain of three. 5.29 to go in the fourth quarter. 33-8. to eight. Bulldogs with the lead. Bulldogs are going to get a very important victory. It's going to put them in, we believe, position to have a home game in two weeks, but now they can't blow it against Concordia next week. Yeah, especially on senior night. That's a huge game. Last home game of the season um, until the playoffs. It's going to be a big game. Concordia is a funky team to play, too. Mm. You know, it's, we've had decent success against them, but we've also had disappointments, and it seems yeah. that they can score against people. They're one of those teams where they're late in the season, and we don't really know a lot about them because we don't play them. They're almost somewhat unknown. Third and two, and that play in the backfield is going to get blown up by the Bulldog defense. It was, again, Mason Owen just beating his man and getting into the backfield, and then nothing's going to destroy any offensive play better, particularly a run play, than getting guys into the offensive backfield. You got two or three guys back there led by Mason Owen. That play's not going anywhere. Yeah, and the Bulldogs' defensive line shows a lot of great discipline, too. They don't rush upfield as soon as they break through the line. They're really staying at the line of scrimmage and making plays in the backfield whenever they come to them. They're really patient and disciplined. Tanner Schilling will boot the football away. Here comes the Bulldog rush. The kick is short. Doesn't turn over. It's going to hit at the 41-yard line. Bulldogs getting out of the way. Travis Leeper says... I'm up by 25 points. I'll let it roll. I'll give Kirksville the yardage. It rolls down to the 25. It'll be first down in 10 from there for the uh, Trenton Bulldogs. It has been, I mentioned this at the uh, at the front of the broadcast, Jacob, seven years, maybe even going back to 07. We know the 07 team was uh, unbeaten and just having a dominant season with Van Evener and Hoyt and Tabard and Stevens and those boys. Trenton had a nice season after that, and I don't have all the stats in front of me, certainly. I don't know if there were 6-2 and two at any point. 6-2 uh, and two is a really good record, 75% winning percentage after tonight. Yeah, give a lot of credit to the Trenton coaching staff, Boswell and uh, Coach Coffey, for really sewing up this offense and defense and making this a great team on the whole. 4.08 to go in the fourth quarter. Trenton moving in on the win. Spencer Harris is in. Logan Schuler is in. And Leeper is in. Hand off Schuler across the 25 to the 28-yard line for a gain of three. Lexington, ooh, boy, what a score here, guys. Lexington 28, Higginsville four, uh, 14. That wow. Lexington, uh, you know how good that makes us look, though? Lexington's going to go to 8-0 if they hold on with a win over Higginsville. We lost them by one point. We were a half yard away from beating them. Yeah, but then on the other side, you also have to think we did have a pretty bad second half against We did. We did. Uh, Milan 9, Highland 8. That's a halftime score about a half hour to our west over in Milan tonight. Three and a half to go for the Trenton Bulldogs. Keeper by Harris, and he's going to get banged down at the 28-yard line. Those uh, scores were texted to me by our studio engineer, Emily Malonzo. M, anything that you can find in addition to the ones that you just sent me, feel free. Uh, look for a LeBlanc score. I'll have her do the work instead of me trying to do the play-by-play -play and check my Twitter account at the same time. That gets a tad confusing. Hey, I'm trying to check it on my phone and not hang up on Emily at the same time. Well, I mean, heck, Logan's not doing anything. We can have him do it. <laughs> Game's in the bag, Logan. That's your new job, buddy. 33-8. to eight. Logan's going to be with me up in Unionville tomorrow. Good luck to the Lady Bulldogs. They will take on Marceline. Trenton trying to get back a district softball championship for the first time in three years. Here's Harris pitching it out wide to Berkey Bile. Oh, good tackle there in the open field by Blake Lewis. Knocking down Berkey Bile at the 31-yard line to bring up fourth down and four. Blake Lewis has the touchdown tonight for Kirksville. And he made a great-looking tackle there. I don't know... If I'm Kirksville, Blake Lewis would be a guy I try to get the football to more. That young man can play. 
<clears throat> yeah, absolutely. He's he's uh he's got a lot of speed on him, and he's he's one of those defensive backs, a lot like Leeper, where you know he he he's good at covering, but then he can also come up and he's a great tackler and can stop the run. 2:05 to go in the fourth quarter. Emily, if it helps you, it's LeBlanc and Lafayette. So just look for LeBlanc and Lafayette if you can. That'd be great. We'll try to get a score updates uh, before we uh, sign off tonight. There's a kickback to Sollers. He grabs it at the 30 and dropped at the 31-yard line. I thought I saw a football come out of there. Optical illusion. No fumble on the play. It was uh, Tanner Schilling dropped at the 31-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for Kirksville. 150 to go from Spainauer Field. You know, it's almost a little ironic that the punter is also returning punts for this Kirksville team. A little, little bit, but he's an athlete. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. Long, long-legged. You know, punters can be long-legged. That would you figure if you got long legs, it would kind of give you a little bit more torque when you kick it away. And it also, if you're long-legged with speed. You can uh, move quicker, mm -hmm. <clears throat> take less time in, in picking up yardage. Here's Bohan handing the ball off. Little crease coming right side and brought down is Lewis at the 37-yard line. Has Lewis played much at the running back spot tonight? Not much. I don't think I've seen him. Not much. Blake Lewis. This Kirksville team, they got, they got a lot of rebuilding to do. There's no question about that. They, they play a Class 4, tough schedule in the NCMC. But if you look at two guys here in particular, Bohan, their quarterback, is a sophomore. He doesn't have a lot of help around him. Lewis is also a sophomore. Mm. So two guys that are, can be huge building blocks for this program, 2016-2017. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I think the perfect defining play of that was their touchdown uh, pass that they had a little bit ago. High formation handoff to Lewis. He just bursts into the secondary brought down by Harris at the 47 yard line we've seen a lot of carries for Trenton that have gone for 5 to 10 yards where there hasn't been a ton of room but Trenton has grinded out that might have been the one run for both teams tonight where we saw more open field on the straight draw play than any other run the whole night long. That opened big time for Lewis. Yeah, and that's exactly how you run the ball right there. There was just a, a tiny sliver of open space, and Lewis, you know, he, he had no hesitation, put his foot in the ground, and absolutely ran through the line as hard as he can. Lexington 34, Higginsville 14. Wow, that is so impressive. The Minutemen are for real, folks. They're going to go to 7-0, and barring a huge Husker comeback as Lewis will drag Trenton, the Bulldog Tacklers, to the 50. Smithville, 10, Chillicothe, 7. Lafayette over LeBlanc at the half. That's the score I had, so it's not an update from the one that we had earlier, but we'll toss it along, 17-7. Lafayette over LeBlanc. 34-14. i got to say, I'm stunned by that score. I thought Lexington had an outside chance of winning, but I thought Higginsville was a favorite, and Lexington's beaten them by 20. Yeah, I'm really surprised by that, too. Although I will say, uh, of any team to make a wild comeback, I would say Higginsville could probably be that team, considering how explosive they are. Yeah, and it's also, you know, we kind of mentioned it. Let's uh, give you the final score as uh, you're watching on video at home or listening. We want to uh, kind of uh, dot the I's and cross the T's here at Spainauer Field in Kirksville. This one is over. It's in the book. The Trenton Bulldogs are officially 6-2 and two on the football season. Colton Neff is over there, not shaking hands, not giving high fives. They're given elbow bumps with each other. <laughs> elbow bumps, bicep bumps, whatever you want to call them. The Bulldogs are going to have an enjoyable bus ride back to Trenton High School tonight. 33-8, to the final score. Trenton really dominated this one from the outset. After a scoreless first quarter, the Bulldogs scored 19 consecutive points in the second. Outscored Kirksville 14-8 to in the third. The Dogs are now 6-2. and Kirksville falls to 0-8. One of the teams that Trenton is chasing and probably didn't have a great chance of catching, quite honestly, because Lexington beat us head-to-head. -head. But Lexington, I would say the most impressive victory if they hold on to that one in our district tonight, Jacob. But uh, also, I think what also plays in, we've been down to both of those communities, Lexington and Higginsville, about 10 miles apart. That's a rivalry game. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so. It's, and we played Lexington uh, the past few years, and it's always been one of those games where it's been uh, bring your lunch pail really tough head-to-head -head game and and that really impresses me their their score over Higginsville considering how talented of a team Higginsville is and how Lexington didn't look like they could hang with that team whenever we played them Lexington knows Higginsville they've been playing it for a long time but it's still impressive I won't take anything away from what that Lexington score I just got but when you do know a team and you know you're good Lexington 7-0 they know they're good mm -hmm. 
they've got confidence they can play. And as far as we're concerned, Higginsville's a tough matchup for us. Yeah, we really match up a lo- we match up a lot better with Lexington than Higginsville. Yeah, yeah, and and you know that makes you wonder if we match up so well with Lexington and Lexington matches up so well with Higginsville, why is it that we match up so poorly with Higginsville? <laughs> but you know the, the cards are going to fall where they do, and we're gonna we're gonna play with whatever opponent we we get coming. It, 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 we're gonna see somebody good in that district. Yes, yes there right. are a lot of good teams in that district. The only one that's well, Lathrop is below 500, and they're scary. Mm-hmm. They they put up points. Carrollton's also below 500. That would be the opponent if they stay in the eighth spot. Carrollton's going to have a tough time with East Buck. Other than that, two weeks from now, who knows what's going to happen. I, c- I could see road teams winning three of the four games that night. I really could. Well, well these boys and Coach Bosler are going to be ready for anyone, that's for sure. We might be on the road. We might be at home. I got a sneaking uh, suspicion here, Jake, that if we...